Dimetrodon is a genus of non-mammalian synapsid that lived during the early Permian period, around 295 to 272 million years ago. Dimetrodon is often mistaken for a dinosaur or as a contemporary of dinosaurs in popular culture, but it became extinct around 40 million years before the advent of dinosaurs. Most species measured 1.7 to 4.6 meters, or 5.6 to 15.1 feet long, and weighed 28 to 250 kilograms, 62 to 551 pounds. The most prominent feature of Dimetrodon is the large neural spine sail on its back formed by elongated spines extending from the vertebrae. It was an obligate quadruped. It could only walk on four legs and had a tall curved skull with a large teeth of different sizes set along the jaws. Most fossils have been found in the southwestern United States, the majority of these coming from a geological deposit called the Red Beds of Texas and Oklahoma. Its fossils were also found in Germany, and over a dozen species have been named since the genus was first erected in 1878. Although reptile-like in appearance and physiology, Dimetrodon is much more closely related to mammals than to reptiles, though it is not a direct ancestor of mammals. Single openings in the skull behind each eye, known as temporal fenestrae, and other skull features distinguish Dimetrodon and true mammals from most of the earliest sauropsids. Dimetrodon was probably one of the apex predators of the Cicheralian ecosystems, feeding on fish and tetrapods, including reptiles and amphibians. Smaller Dimetrodon species, though, may have had different ecological roles. Discovery The earliest discovery of Dimetrodon fossils were of a maxilla recovered in 1845 by a man named Donald MacLeod, living in the British colony of Prince Edward Island. These fossils were purchased by John William Johnson, a Canadian geologist, and described by Joseph Leedy in 1854 as the mandible of the Bathygnathus borealis, a large carnivore related to the Thecodontosaurus, although it was later reclassified as a species of Dimetrodon in 2015 as Dimetrodon borealis. Edward Drinker Cope was the first to publish an official description of this animal. Cope obtained the fossil he used for his description and those of many other Permian tetrapods from several collectors who had been exploring the famous red beds in Texas. The most recent fossil discoveries were made at a site known as Bromaca locality in Germany in 2001. However, Dimetrodon fossils are mostly found in states such as Utah, Oklahoma, Texas, Arizona, and Ohio. These areas were part of the Euramerica supercontinent during the early Permian. Dimetrodon had a nasty bite. Sail-backed proto-mammal Dimetrodon had a mouth full of different tooth types, such as incisor-like teeth for gripping, stabbing canines, recurved rear teeth for shearing through flesh, and even hidden teeth on the roof of the mouth to pin struggling prey. This combination of features, shared by other members of the Sphenicodontid group to which Dimetrodon belonged, originated with such predators as they thrived between 298 and 272 million years ago. The oldest and smallest species, Dimetrodon milleri, had teeth with straight cutting edges. Those teeth were sharp but not especially well suited to cutting through skin and muscle. By the time of the later, larger Dimetrodon limbatus, though, these carnivores had evolved small serrations in the enamel along the cutting edges of some of the teeth. The teeth of Dimetrodon grandis were even more specialized for cutting. Teeth in this last and largest species of Dimetrodon had prominent denticles along the slicing surface that created a serrated edge similar to that of predatory dinosaurs. 
Big, serrate-toothed dimetrodon evolved at a time when their herbivorous victims were also becoming larger. Barrel-bodied, pin-headed protomals, called casids, proliferated during this time. The sail-backed edifosaurids, as well as amphibians called diadectids, also underwent an increase in body size. Damaged bones show that dimetrodon weren't above eating their own kind either, and so it's possible that the serrated teeth of species such as Dimetrodon grandis gave these carnivores the literal edge they needed to expand their menu options. The thickness and mass of the teeth of Dimetrodon may have also been an adaption for increasing dental longevity. Nasal Cavity, Tail, and Sail of Dimetrodon On the inner surface of the nasal section of skull are ridges called nasoturbinals, which may have supported cartilage that increased the area of the olfactory epithelium, the area of tissue that detects odors. These ridges are much smaller than those of later synapsids from the late Permian and Triassic, whose large nasoturbinals are taken as evidence for warm-bloodedness because they may have supported mucosal membranes that warmed and moistened incoming air. Thus, the nasal cavity of Dimetrodon is transitional between those of early land vertebrates and mammals. A largely complete tail of Dimetrodon was not described until 1927. The tail of Dimetrodon makes up a large portion of its total body length and includes around 50 caudal vertebrae. Tails were missing or incomplete in the first described skeletons of Dimetrodon. The only caudal vertebrae known were the 11 closest to the hip. Since these first few caudal vertebrae narrow rapidly as they progress farther from the hip, many paleontologists in the late 19th and early 20th centuries thought that Dimetrodon had a very short tail. Sail Paleontologists have proposed many ways in which the sail of Dimetrodon could have functioned. It was suggested that the sail might have served as camouflage among reeds while Dimetrodon waited for prey, or as an actual boat-like sail to catch the wind while the animal was in the water. Another idea is that the long neural spines have stabilized the trunk by restricting up and down movement, which would allow for a more efficient side-to-side -side movement while walking. Today's mammals, by and large, keep a constant internal body temperature. It's possible that Dimetrodon lacked this ability and would have had to rely on its environment to warm itself up or cool down. Dimetrodon's iconic sail was made up of extremely long, rod-like neural spines. The tallest ones occurred in the middle of the creature's back, between the shoulder and hips, giving the sail as a whole something of a dumbbell shape. In the largest Dimetrodon, the sail's tip would have stood at least 5 feet or 1.5 meters off the ground. Having tall neural spines with tissue and blood vessels in between would provide a lot of surface area to help with thermoregulation, or how an animal maintains ideal body temperatures. The sail of Dimetrodon might have been essentially a giant solar panel that allowed it to get going earlier and keep moving longer in the day. One of its closest relatives was Sphenacodon, another carnivore with a similar build overall. Like Dimetrodon, Sphenacodon was a beast from the early Permian, but unlike Dimetrodon, it didn't have a massive sail on its back. Although the function of its sail remains uncertain, Dimetrodon and other Sphenacanontids were likely to have been whole-body endotherms, characterized by a high-energy metabolism and probably a capacity for maintaining a high and stable body temperature. The sail of Dimetrodon grew at a much faster rate than was necessary for thermoregulation and suggested that sexual selection was the primary reason for its evolution. If the sail was not used for thermoregulation, then maybe it acted as a prehistoric babe magnet. There is also evidence of sexual dimorphism, both in the robustness of the skeleton and in the relative height of the spines of Dimetrodon limbatus. Dimetrodon may have been sexually dimorphic, meaning that males and females had slightly different body sizes. Some specimens of Dimetrodon 
have been hypothesized as males because they have thicker bones, larger sails, longer skulls, and more pronounced maxillary steps than others. Skin No fossil evidence of dimetrodon skin has yet been found. Impressions of the skin of a related animal, Estemenosuchus, indicate that it would have been smooth and well provided with glands, but this form of skin may not have applied to Dimetrodon, as its lineage is fairly distant. Dimetrodon, as other synapsids, may have had large scutes on the underside of its tail and belly. Food Web Dimetrodon was probably the top predator of the Red Beds ecosystem, feeding on a variety of organisms, such as the shark Xenocanthus, the aquatic amphibians Trimerorachis, Diplocolus, and the terrestrial tetrapods Cimoria and Trematops. Insects are known from the early Permian red beds and were probably involved to some degree in the same food web as Dimetrodon. The exact lifestyle of Dimetrodon, amphibious to terrestrial, has long been controversial, but bone microanatomy supports a terrestrial lifestyle, which implies that it would have fed mostly on land, on the banks, or in very shallow water. Evidence also exists for Dimetrodon preying on aestivating Diplocolus during times of drought, with three partially eaten juvenile Diplocolus in a burrow of eight bearing teeth marks from a Dimetrodon that unearthed and killed them.